Hello, welcome to this uh, Copernicus Marine Service practical session on the Baltic Sea. My name is uh, Mathilde Cancet. I'm a scientific engineer at Novelties in France, and I will be your trainer for this uh, Waves practical session. We are going to work in the Jupyter Notebook environment, so the first thing you have to know is how to uh, validate a code cell. To do that, you can click on this button here, run the selected cells in advance, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Shift plus Enter. And if for any reason during the training the kernel is not working anymore, you can click on this button here, Restart the kernel, and then in the top menu, Run here, you can click on the Run all above selected cell, and all the previous cells will be validated and you will be able to continue the training. There are four different notebooks for this uh, practical session about the waves, and each of them has the same architecture with an introduction, a description of the product, and then the exercise. For this training, we will focus on a storm event that occurred in January 2017 in the Baltic Sea. It was one of the largest storms. Uh, that uh, occurred in this region, uh, or at least for which we have uh, records, and we will explore the Siemens model products uh, to see how they, they how the waves are uh, shown in in this uh, product during this event. So uh, there are two different wave products for the Baltic Sea. Uh, analysis and forecast products that are available from April 2018 to today, and hindcast products which are available from January 1993 to December 2018. So because we are going to focus on, uh, on an event that occurred in January 2017, we will use the hindcast products for this uh, training. Both products are highly surface products and they contain a number of parameters about the significant wave height, uh, the wave period, the wave uh, direction, the stock's drift velocity, the wind wave significant wave height, and it, uh, period and direction also, the primary swell and the secondary swell. If you want more, more details about this uh, data set, you can uh, click on these links and you will directly access the CMEMS web page for these products where you will um, uh, access to the user manual and to the quality reports and also where you will be able to download the data. So as I said, this uh, product is a Harley product, so it means that all variables uh, are Harley data. And it's a 2 kilometer horizontal resolution product with one uh, level of depth. It's a surface product. And you can see here that it's a Baltic product, so it's a regional model. All the CMEMS products are stored in uh, NetCDF file, so it's a common uh, format to store scientific data, which contains uh, a lot of information about uh, the, the data, such as the dimension, typically the time, the latitude, the longitude, the depth, and also several variables that depend on uh, one or more of these dimensions. And each variable comes with uh, its own uh, attributes, such as its unit, its name, the field value, the scale factor, uh, min and max values, and so on. And there are also global attributes in the products that give general information. Before we start uh, to do anything with the product, we have to import uh, Python libraries uh, in, in, the, in the system. And uh, to do that, we are going to validate this cell. So the, the libraries that we will use 
um, are the ones that will enable us to handle the data, to open the metadata file, and to plot the data. So I validate this cell. So again, you can either click on this button here, or you can use the shortcut Shift and Enter. And you can see that it has been validated because there is a number here now. So we're going to look at one file, and to do this, we need to uh, define where it is stored. We have downloaded data for this training, and all the data are stored in this uh, folder here. So you can see there are two different uh, folders, one here for the Waves uh, Holly products, and another one for another kind of products that will be used in another uh, notebook. For this training and uh, to explore the data, we will use this uh, file, which was downloaded directly from the FTP interface. So it's the file for the 11th of January 2017. And we validate here its name. And then we use the open dataset function from the X-Array library to open and post the file contents. So you can see that the file has three coordinates, latitude, longitude, and time, and that these coordinates have dimensions here. So we have 24 time frames, for example, and we have a grid for the latitude and the longitude. And then we have 17 variables inside the product. So I can extend them here. So I see it here, all the names. Each of these variables depends on the time, the latitude, and the longitude. And if you click here, you can have some information about these variables. So you can see that VHN0 is the spectral significant wave height, and that it's given in meters, and that uh, it's valid between 0 and 20 meters. If I show, uh, if I had the, the information, I can show another one here, which is the number of values within this variable, and how it is coded in the file. So you can uh, look at the information for each of the variables. And then we have the global attributes here, which gives information about uh, the source of the product, the institute uh, who produced the, the, the model uh, output, the uh, sp uh, special extension of the product, the grid resolution, and so on. So now, what we did here was just to uh, use this uh, function, but of course we can store this information into a variable. So that's what we do here. We store the information into the if f in variable, and then we show some information from this variable with the info uh, function. So you can see all the information about the dimension, the coordinates, and the data variables, and the global attributes. Then we can access some specific information from the dataset. For example, we can access the attributes, the global attributes, uh, using this function here, and the name of the global attributes. So if I click, if I validate this cell, I get the easternmost longitude of the uh, domain uh, that is covered by the product, and you can see that it's the value that is given here. To get information about all the variables inside the product, we use the data vars function, and so you have all the information on the variables with the, the coordinates. Then you can have information about the coordinates with the chords function here, and you can see the three coordinates, how they are coded in the file, and uh, their values. Information about the dimensions. Again, so here you can see the number of latitude points, of longitude points, and of time frames. And if you want to display a the values of a particular variable or of a coordinate inside of the dataset, you can use the values function. So 
you have to call first the dataset, then the variable inside the dataset, and then the values function. And here we print all the times values inside the dataset. And you can see that we have all the time frames for the 11th of January 2017. Of course, we can store this information into a variable. That's what we do here. We store the information into var time. And if we want to display var time, we print, use the print function here. And you have, again, the date. Another way to look at the product is to use the Linux uh, command uh, ncdump. Uh, this is very common uh, command to uh, explore the netcdf files and to call a Linux command uh, with, within the Jupyter Notebook, you have to uh, insert an exclamation point just before uh, the command. So here I do it and you can see all the information about the dataset, so the dimensions and all the variables with their attributes. And the global attributes. And one interesting thing is about the time variable. Here you can see that the unit of the time variable is second since the 1st January 1917. So it's 1970. So that's a huge number of seconds. And it's not very uh, easy to, to handle. But if you look at the data uh, uh, from the, uh, the var time value here, you can see that Python automatically uh, transform or translate this information in seconds into a human readable uh, date. So that's very uh, convenient. Okay, so now that we have explored the data set, we can uh, look at the data during the storm. So first we are going to uh, create a folder where we will plot, we will store all the plots uh, that will be produced by the notebook. As you can see here, there is a, a folder here which is called out and which is empty for now. But um, if I validate this uh, so here you can see that now we have a folder here where we will store all the plots from this notebook. Then we open the netcdf uh, file and we select the variables of interest. So for this uh, exercise we will uh, look at the significant wave height variables. We have four uh, different parameters, the, significant, uh, the spectral significant wave height, uh, and then the uh, significant wind wave height, the primus wrist well wave height, and the secondary wrist well wave height. So, um, first, we need to again define the, where the data is uh, stored. So, we call this file, it's the same as before, but uh, we call it again here. Then we uh, define the variable that we want to extract. So these are exactly the names that are inside the, the file. Then we use the open dataset function as before, and we store all the dataset inside the fin variable. And then we extract from the fin dataset the, uh, in the variable, the, the information that corresponds to the var name, to the variables of interest. And we store this uh, information into uh, these variables. We will print the, by the, the first variable, the significant wave height. And then for, to ease the, the handling for the plot, uh, we will uh, store all these variables inside one single variable here, uh, create, by creating a list. And then we define short names for the variable here that will be used for the titles of the plot. And again, we store all these uh, short names in, into one uh, list of uh, short names. And finally, we store the coordinates in separate variables, so time, long, and longitude and latitude. And we close the data set to free the memory. So I validate the cell. And as I mentioned before, we first print 
the uh, variable that contains information about the significant wave height. So we have the information here. So we find again the dimensions, the coordinates, and the attributes. So it's uh, the, it's the correct variable. And then we print the time variable. And again, we have the time values here. We can check the length of uh, the variable where we stored the so var dot, where we stored all the or four significant wave height variables. And we can print also the first element of our dot. And uh, remember that uh, as Python starts at uh, zero, when you want to call the first element, you have to call the element with the index uh, zero. So I validate this cell, and we can see that our dot has a length of four. So that's uh, good news. It worked. And the first element of Bartot is the VHN0, so that's what we had uh, written here, so that's fine. So now let's map the data. We're going to map each of these uh, variables uh, on one figure and uh, with uh, uh, subplots corresponding to each time frame. So to do that, we are going to use different functions. So the subplot function to define the subplots, and uh, the base map and mesh grid and the map and picolor mesh functions to plot the maps. First, we define the plot window for the regional uh, or our map. Then we define the minimum and the maximum values for the significant wave height. So we will have the same scale for the four variables. Then we define a grid with the longitude, the longitude and the latitude. This is necessary for the, to map the data. And then we uh, loop on the content of our dot uh, for each variable. And for each variable, we define a figure with uh, four subplots. And then we uh, loop on the time and we plot the variable. To do that, we use uh, we define a map where we plot a number of information, and then we add here the variable with the picolor mesh function, and then we add uh, information about the title and uh, the, the x and the y labels. And finally, we save the figure into a file, and uh, we show it. So I validate this cell. So it takes a bit of a time to produce the, the figure, but you can see here the name of, a, of the saved file for the significant wave height, and here the, the plots day by day, uh, hour by hour of the, of the significant wave height um, over the Baltic Sea. Um, just a remark, you see here we have uh, some blank uh, regions which corresponds to the sea ice cover because uh, we are in January and uh, there is still a bit of ice in this period at this day. Uh, and what we observe is uh, clearly an increase in the significant wave height over the time, especially in the Baltic proper and in the Bosnian Sea. And it is clearly visible here, for example, where you can see that at 9 o'clock in the evening, there are a significant wave height of about 7 meters in the Baltic proper. And then it starts to reduce a bit. If we look at the wind waves, we see the same kind of behavior, so an increase in the wind waves height, significant wave height, and with a maximum on uh, at nine o'clock in the evening, and again about seven meters of uh, significant wind wave height. For the primary swell, on the contrary, the significant wave height is very low all over the period. And it's the same for the secondary swell that is coming. Yes, it's 
here, you can see there is no change during the period, or at least not a large enough change to uh, contribute to the total significant wave height. So clearly, the main contributor to this uh, significant wave height here is the wind wave. So it's what was expected because it's a storm, but you can see it directly from the different parameters inside the product. So that's it for this uh, notebook, and you can go to the next one by clicking simply on this link. Thank you.